Gary Neville recently did a quick Twitter Q&A with his followers. He was asked questions and one of those questions was, Gary, if everyone's fit, who is your starting 11 for Manchester United? And to say the starting 11 caused a little bit of controversy, well, that's, that's, that's being pretty polite. I agree with a lot of what Gary has to say. You know by now here on United People's TV, I cover a lot of Gary Neville's comments. But there are a few holes I think I would like to pick in this team. It's something a little bit different. It's something a bit of fun. Let's talk about the best 11 that Gary wants to see United playing for Manchester United if everybody is fit. Before we head into the video, please, would you, if you enjoyed the video by the end, subscribe and drop a like on the video as well. But let's take a look at Gary Neville's Best starting 11 for Manchester United. And let's rip it apart. Starting off in defence. Now, there's not much ripping going on here, really. Gary would start De Gea in goal. He would start Shaw and Wan-Bissaka as the full-backs. And he'd start Maguire and Varane as the two centre-backs. Man United's back five, for the first time in a long time, is settled. In terms of, you know what back five it's going to be if everyone's fit. And at the same time as that, we're on our worst defensive run at Old Trafford without a clean sheet in the Premier League in 50 years. We can't keep a clean sheet in any game. Defensively, we almost look a bit of a shambles like we did against Villarreal. Obviously, we changed a few players in and out there. But it's kind of ironic, really, that the back five now is looking the strongest it's ever looked in a long time on paper, whilst at the same time on the pitch looking abysmal. Now, for me, that's definitely just as much to do with the players in front of them as it is to do with them themselves. Because uh, in the same way as um, attack starts from defence, defence starts from attack. And I, I believe the midfield is contributing to our our struggles. I would call them politely struggles in defence right now. Uh, shit, if I'm not being polite. But that back five, there's no real controversy. It's when you go further up the pitch that you start asking questions, really. But before I do dive into that midfield, I want to say thank you very much to OneFootball for sponsoring this video. You know by now that they're a big supporter of United People's TV, so I want to say thank you to them. There is a link in the description for anybody who hasn't had the privilege of downloading the OneFootball app by now, but surely you would have. If you haven't, the link's in the description. It's free. All the latest Manchester United news, all the matches covered, all the stats before, during and after the games, all the latest transfer news, all the stats from the season, everything you could possibly need in one place. About Man United anyway. Or everybody, in fact. Not just Man United. I follow United, obviously. So that's why I only, only see United news, really. If you want to download it, the link is in the description. As I said, it's free. Go and do it. One Football are big supporters of United People's TV. So go and support them. But let's move on to the midfield here with Gary Neville and let's let's start having conversations. Midfield really is the biggest talking point about Manchester United. We all knew it was going to be going into the season because we didn't sign a central midfielder. It's been McTominay and Fred starting there for the majority of the games this year. Solskjaer trusts them. We know how much disdain there is amongst the fan base towards those two playing. So who is Gary choosing? He's going for McTominay, but he's partnering him with Pogba and not with Fred. Now, this is actually a midfield two I would like to see, at least to be given an opportunity. Uh, McTominay and Fred, you know what Fred's good at. He's good at breaking up the opposition. He's good at interceptions. He's good at uh, sort of battling and being that defensive midfielder. I always call him the wasp. He's a wasp, but really annoying, won't go away sort of player, but not somebody who's capable of bringing the ball through the transition zones, bringing it out from defense into midfield and bridging that gap to attack. I don't think McTominay is either. I think he's got a better passing range than Fred, but still both of them are limited. Ooh, that's being polite. Crap in comparison to Paul Pogba. Now, Paul Pogba in midfield, I genuinely think this is this is where he needs to operate this season because of what happens when Rashford comes back. Although there's Rashford in this team. Hmm, question marks. We're going on to the strikers next and the attackers, but McTominay and Pogba in midfield is what? Gary never wants to see. And as I said, I think it's a midfield two I would like to try. I think on paper, probably the best midfield for United is Matic and Pogba. But in reality, Matic just doesn't have the legs to play the full 90 minutes every single week. If Matic was five years younger, I think our midfield would be pretty complete. Matic as a holding midfielder with Pogba and Bruno in front of him. But he's not. And therefore, it's compromised wherever you look. Whether it's Fred and McTominay, whether it's Fred and Pogba, or Matic and, and Pogba, or Matic and McTominay. Gary's gone for McTominay and Pogba. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But for me, I don't think it'll be a horrendous midfield. It will certainly be better than McTominay and Fred. 
And out of the two of McTominay or Fred, who would I rather have? I'd rather have McTominay. So maybe that's a midfield that we could see going into the Leicester game and from then on. Because United certainly need improvement in midfield. But as much as we can talk about the defence and as much as we can talk about midfield, it's, it's basically the attack as to why I wanted to do this video. Gary was asked for his best 11 if all the players were available. So I'm going to presume that inside that he's included Rashford, who's not fit just yet. He's included Sancho. Well, in, included them, but not put them in his team. His front four, he's gone for Ronaldo, Bruno, Greenwood and Cavani. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? And this is where, I'll be honest, Gary, I'm starting to scratch my head. I don't know what... I, I've put Ronaldo here on the left. I've put Bruno in the middle. I think Bruno's... You know where he's playing there. Greenwood on the right. He's probably playing on the right. And Gary, Gary hasn't given a formation, so I, I'm making a couple of assumptions here. And Cavani. You could, I suppose, play two up top with Ronaldo and Cavani. What, with Bruno and Greenwood as attacking midfielders behind him? There's more question marks there as well. So I think Gary probably means that Ronaldo on the left, Cavani up front, and Greenwood on the right. And Gary, mate. What? the hell is that? What is that? Where is Marcus Rashford? Where is Jadon Sancho? That's madness to have chosen that as a front four. The best front four when everybody is fit at Manchester United. That is not it. Ronaldo out on the left. He's, I know he can play out on the left, but his best positions up front is not that he's 36, man. Ronaldo's not that sort of player who's going to run at a defender run past him, sprint to the byline, get across. Nah, man, this is Ronaldo. He's got the worst pressing stats out of any attacker in the league. Ronaldo has to stay in and around the penalty box, and that's it. Simple. So that's why it's a bit difficult for United to get Cavani and Ronaldo in the same team, because they both operate in very similar ways. Although Cavani has a far more natural pressing game and far more energy than Ronaldo does. But Ronaldo has more goals. So, is what it is. But to not include Mar Marcus Rashford is... A big surprise here. That's probably the biggest surprise. Because Gary, I know Gary Neville was such a huge fan of Rashford. And we all are. Rashford's incredible. And to not put him on the left wing when everyone's fit in this United team, I think is is just wrong. Just absolutely wrong. I have no idea how he's not in here. Maybe, I'm just giving, maybe I'll give Gary the benefit of the doubt and he just didn't include him. Maybe they forgot about him. Nah, Gary, nah. I've got no benefit of the doubt here. This is just, that's just a, that's just a shit front four. Considering who we've got. And then to not include Jaden Sancho as well. Now, the Sancho one, I think you could have an argument there if you really wanted to. Greenwood's been in fantastic form up until the last few games, two or three games, I would say. Greenwood's dropped off a little bit, uh, but you can't expect any player of that age to be consistently as good as he was the first four weeks of the season, the entire season. Of course, he's going to come in and out, some purple patches and some downtime. I think he's in that moment right now, but so is the whole of Manchester United's attackers. I mean, the amount of chances we had against Villa and against West Ham, we didn't score in either game. That's not just Greenwood. But Greenwood or Sancho on the right-hand side, you could have an argument about. But for me, on paper, if everyone's fit, that front four, it makes itself. It's it's Rashford on the left, it's Bruno in the middle, it's 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 Sancho on the right, and it's Ronaldo up front. It's certainly not Cavani up front. Ronaldo on the left, Greenwood on the right, and Bruno in the middle. I think that's absolutely mad. Gary, are you, be, are you, are you, are you drunk when you did this? You all right? You feeling good? Nothing wrong? Sure? Something's wrong with that. Something's definitely wrong with that. That stinks. <laughs> I can't believe he's chosen it. That's why I wanted to do this video. It's something a little bit different, I suppose. Something a little bit fun. It's an international break. And there isn't that much fun around Manchester United at the moment. So why not dissect and basically rip apart this Gary Neville 11? The, the back five, we all agree on the back five. The midfield, there's arguments to be had. Whether Donny's in there, whether Fred's in there, whether Matic is in there, what the formation is, whether you play one hole in midfield. Cool, there's arguments there. But up front... There's no argument for Ronaldo on the left wing, in my opinion. There's an argument for Cavani up front, but to have Cavani up front means you don't have Ronaldo, which is basically a rhetorical question. Then it's just Ronaldo. Greenwood on the right instead of Sancho, you can that's you can toss a coin there. But I think it should be Sancho and Greenwood, whoever's on form, I suppose. And I suppose neither of them are on form at the moment. But when everyone's fit, this isn't a question about form. It's a question about fitness. It's Rashford on the left. It's Sancho on the right. It's Bruno through the middle, man. And it's Ronaldo up front. That's my opinion anyway. I wanted to say that. I wanted to react to Gary Neville's start 11. I want to hear from you in the comments what you think about that. No Rashford and no Sancho from Gary Neville. He's got McTominay in midfield. Would you have him there? Would you have Pogba down there? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you consider subscribing to United People's TV.
and drop a like on the video too. But what do you think about Gary Neville's starting 11 for United when everyone's fit? 